to get started without sincerity, positivity falls flat. Okay. You've seen my video, I hope, of why positivity is the only path. Um, I've been very negative at, at, you know, when I was younger and at different points in my life. And I know what it's like to be negative. I know what it's like to be sarcastic. I know what it's like to be ironic. I know what it's like to be um, an atheist who thinks he's smarter than everyone. And, um, you know, everyone else is stupid. And to be in that constant kind of um, uh, judgment of people. And I can tell you that that it does not make you happy. It really does not. Um, and the the roots of irony, uh, the roots of sarcasm, and the prevalence of it in our culture is the result of cultural Marxism. If you don't know what cultural Marxism is, I strongly suggest that you look it up. Uh, but a brief synopsis is after the Marxist revolution in Russia failed and or, or succeeded, um, Marxists assumed that it was going to be adopted worldwide, and it wasn't. And when it wasn't, these uh, German dissident intellectuals moved to America and founded the school of um, critical theory, okay? They wanted to criticize Western culture to the point where it was ready to adopt uh, Marxism. And cultural Marxism has been so much more successful than actual economic Marxism, okay? The traditional Marxist ideology is, is um, you know, in, in the form of uh, Stalinism is played out. But cultural Marxism is the religion of America, okay? It is Marxism mixed with weaponized Freudian psychology. So you hear... People use bandy about terms like narcissism, like projection, like um, father issues, and they use these as attacks on people. Misogynist, sexist, racist. These are terms that weren't even in the Western lexicon in the 1950s. This was, this is completely uh, a modern phenomenon. Okay. And it is a critical phenomenon, okay? It is called critical theory for a reason because it doesn't present um, any type of valid alternative. It attacks the fundamentals of what the society was, okay? Now, I'm not saying, you know, hating women is a good thing or being racist, you know, hating people from other races is a good thing. I'm just explaining the foundations of this critical theory. And... That is our culture now. That is our culture is a culture of criticism. And you don't even, many people don't even realize it um, until you step out of the culture to see how fucking nasty it is, to see what always being critical um, results in. And go on any left wing or, or liberal progressive media site, and it's always it's a problem with everything. It's a critique of everything. Someone's being misogynistic, someone's being narcissist, someone's being projecting, someone is being an egomaniac. All these weaponized uh, psychological terms constantly, constantly everyone is under attack. And as opposed to under religion, there is no redemption, there is no, um, you know, forgiveness. It is just you are branded as this label and you're a bad person. And the progressives suffer too, okay? They suffer in living at, in being constantly outraged. Imagine if you are just walking around and everywhere you go, you see inequality or you see suffering or you see outrage and you see someone living the wrong way or saying the wrong word and you, you look at the world as this constantly hostile place that you're always uh, critiquing, okay? And... What's really changed is you don't hear terms like beauty and glory and greatness and glorious anymore. Those words aren't used. Those words are seen as sentimental relics of the past because that type of ideology has just been decimated in the wake of this critical theory and uh, living in the analytical mind. Okay, that type of sentimental reality has just been decimated under 
that type of mentality to the point where my generation, and I'm in my mid thirties, but especially the younger generation, um, guys and girls, 18 to 25, are just embarrassed to feel. They're embarrassed to um, talk, uh, you know, put strong emotions onto something. Like when I, when I use the words tremendous and I use the words excellent and I use the words, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be terrific, some people, you know, if I'm talking in public, I'll see them snicker. They think that I'm being facetious or they think that I'm being um, outrageous or they think that I'm, I'm being over the top. But that's, that's the difference between my world view and their world view. They can't even talk in those terms without irony. They can't even talk in those terms without um, embarrassment. And they'll snicker a little bit because they might be embarrassed for me. When in reality, this, this, is, this is my reality. I live in tremendous and excellent. And I try and convey that to you as much as possible. This is, not a, this is not an act. This is not, when I do something that I'm proud of, I'm like, that was excellent, man. You know, I, I, I congratulate myself on that. When I tell, sometimes I meet a young guy out here who's got a blog and I, I'll tell him, look, man, you're doing great stuff. You're doing excellent. You're doing And at first he thinks that I'm fucking lying to him. Or... Or I'm telling a girl she's beautiful and I like her eyes and I like her smile. I'm not lying. I am feeling those. I'm just, ex I'm allowing myself to feel and then I'm expressing those emotions. And it changes your life. It changes your life. Because the reality is, reason and logic, we've been trained to see as our gods. Okay, reason and logic is everything. And I'm a very logical person. Okay, I'm, I'm, I have a strong analytical mind as well. So I'm not casting those off. What I'm saying is when you really understand yourself, you recognize that reason and logic serve your emotions. You are an emotional creature. Every second of the day, you are trying to feel happy and you're trying to feel joy and you're trying to feel love. And reason and logic are what get you there. They are okay, I'm gonna use my logic to build a business so that I have financial security and so that I can get women and so that I can um, eat well and live the way that I want to. But my emotions don't serve my logic, right? I mean, is it logical to exist? Is it logical to do all the, it, it's not. I mean, you're, you're using the logic to make you feel good when you really analyze it, okay? So that's an important thing to understand about yourself and the other thing you need to understand is that, and this is very important if you want to understand people, is that every single person in this world wants to feel perfect love and bliss at all times. They want to feel absolute, pure love and bliss at all times. Every single person. And when they're not, there's a certain level of suffering. Okay, The Buddha says existence is suffering. And he's right. Um, now, you can create your life so that you're you know, happy, but would you, if someone would give you a pill to be um, uh, perfectly happy all the time, every single person in the world would take that if it was consistent. Every single person in the world would be on that pill um, because every single person wants to be happy, perfectly happy at all times. And anyone who tells you differently is either lying or completely self-aware, more, more likely self self unaware than a lie because people have no fucking concept of their own inner world. They live in the outer world. Okay. So everyone, when I look around, I see people in pain. When I look around, I see the majority of people in pain and they want to feel love. They want to feel happiness and love and happiness are the same emotion. Okay. You love that sandwich and it makes you happy. You love that girl that you just met. You love, I mean, you're, your boys, your love and happiness are the same thing. And everyone wants to feel love and happiness at all times. But they are they are afraid to express it because um, our culture doesn't really allow for that anymore. Uh, it does not allow for grandiose sentiments. It does not allow for grandiose romantic expressions of love, except in their um, proper channels, like a romance movie. And then even then, it's Captain all kinds of um, subtleties and, and nuances and, and it's not, you know, these grand declarations, right? Because people are afraid to talk like that. They're afraid to talk like that. They're afraid to live like that. 
They are afraid to express themselves because someone is going to cut them down. And that's the culture that we're living in right now. Okay. We deny wanting to feel that love and bliss and we hide behind it. So we hide behind this ironic detachment. All right. 